Welcome back to another episode. Today I'll be sharing the process of transforming the streetcar project from our previous episode into a more finished scene. Let's get started. Again, I wanted to experiment with my painting techniques. I constructed an angled roadway to represent York Street by Union Station. Using styrene pieces and 3D printed set of stairs, I created a simple structure. The true test was going to be the paint job. This was what was going to make the road look convincing or not. I started with a coat of dark grey spray paint, followed by a light misting of light grey to create a convincing asphalt texture. Next, I masked off the asphalt area and applied a concrete colored paint to the sidewalks. Despite the matte finish, it still had a slight shine, so I oversprayed that ramp with a flat white paint. I added road markings using marker pens and incorporated some cracks and details with fine tip micron pens. To enhance the overall appearance, I applied a wash of standard India ink and rubbing alcohol, using a small brush to highlight the sidewalk details. I dabbed white glue and added ground foam to create a realistic weed effect. Satisfied with the outcome, I proceeded to design and construct the two remaining bridges. For the Bathurst Bridge, I used my laser cutter to create the piers, laminating the plywood pieces as needed. For the Spadina Bridge, I used square and round dowels from the dollar store to construct the concrete supports. Piers needed to be on a level surface, so plaster abutments were added. I created basic forms from scrap wood and tape, poured in plaster of Paris, allowed it to set, and then sanded it smooth. After a successful test fit of the piers and the bridge, I continued detailing the roadway. I attached 3D printed railings to the side of Spadina. The concrete piers received the same paint treatment as the highways, and I weathered everything with an India ink wash. I also tried my hand at adding graffiti using paint markers before applying some light additional weathering. Moving on, I focused on the Bathurst Bridge. Using Adobe Illustrator, I designed the bridge and 3D printed all the necessary parts, assembling them much like a kit. By bonding the larger pieces on photocopier paper with superglue, I created a sturdy lamination. With the larger sections in place, I assembled the smaller parts. The result is a nicely stylized replica of the original bridge. With that bridge complete, I painted and weathered the tracks and added ballast and ground cover. It was important to finish these areas before installing the bridge as they would be difficult to access later. After applying a layer of sand, I added some static grass and ballast, blending the tracks with the shoulders and the ground cover.
I discovered a fine spray atomizer during a hair appointment, which proved useful for wetting the scenery without causing any disturbances. Continuing with the project, I added various types of ground cover, spraying them with wet water and securing everything in place with diluted mixture of white glue and water. Once everything dried, I used powder chalks to weather the rails. Finally, I installed hand railings on the Spadina Bridge, as well as street lights. Plate girders were also placed atop the Bathurst Bridge. Overall, this project took longer than expected, with several meticulous details that required a significant amount of time. However, the end result was better than I imagined. My Toronto friends immediately recognized the landmarks despite their condensed and stylized appearance, so I'm going to declare this project a success. Elements like these expansive roads and bridges truly make a difference in creating an impression of a bustling city. That's all for now. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.